revival. Give the Lord a hand clap. <clears throat> are we, a, are we a against anyone? No, we aren't against them as being a person. They can do what they want to do. But you can't be members of a church, at least this church, unless you are, you know, Bible-oriented. We still believe in the Bible, don't we? And that's what it's all about. We're living in those times now when they want to take our Bible and they want to do away with it. And I love everybody. We all love everybody. But, you know, Jesus died because of the Bible. You know, he died because of the Scriptures. And if you look at this, the disciples, the apostles, they died for the same thing. Apostle Paul was beheaded. Peter was crucified. James, the brother uh, of John, he was beheaded. By Herod, or yeah, whenever he said it's unlawful to have your brother's wife, that was the scriptures. So, you know, he preached the scriptures, and that's what it's about. Many people before us, if you go back in history, Christians and people that believed in God and his servants have always suffered for the word because we are not of the world. How many of y'all know the world is against us? Those same people that he's talking about go all the way back to Genesis chapter 10. They're followed all the way down through the Bible. I can take you with them. I can show you where they exist at. And they've always been against Christians. But you know, God overthrew them at the Tower of Babel in Genesis 11, and he will do it again. Amen? Until it's time for them to do what they do. When it is, then that's the way it is. They never were able to overcome Jesus, and they never overthrew him. They were never able to kill him on any of the attempts, even when they tried to stone him in the very beginning. They were not able to do it. They could not do any of that. All right, give the Lord a hand clap and let's go into our message today. That's not our message. We have to deal with that every day. But people on the workforce, you know, they are paying a price today for the scriptures. They want to shun you like you're just, uh, you know, retarded and stuff like that. If you believe in the Bible, 2,000 years old Bible, yes, we go back farther than that. You know, people that don't give our Bible credit don't really understand the Bible. You know, they found in the Qumran caves copies of Deuteronomy, which all go all the way back to about 1400 B.C. So, you know, those copies we have, that's original copies they had that were like very old. So, you know, I thank the Lord for our Bible. Y'all love your Bible? Amen. Matter of fact, Jesus is our Bible. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that the Word of God is quick. That means alive. Who is the Word of God, or what is it? John chapter 1 said, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So we believe Jesus is the Word. Amen? They're synonymous. You can't separate them. They're inseparable. And uh, I want you to turn with me today to the book of Jude. I want to get back in there a little bit. I want to show you some things that are so interesting about this book. It's one of the most interesting books you're going to find in the New Testament. And a lot of people don't understand who Jude was. But Jude was the brother of Jesus. He was not an apostle. He never believed that Jesus was the Messiah till after his resurrection. James is also the Lord's brother. He never believed in Jesus till after the resurrection. So they were not of the apostles. He says in Jude chapter 1, verse 1, he says that I'm a servant of Jesus Christ, a bondservant. Of course, Paul makes the same statement. And also, uh, Peter makes the same statement. So, you know, I thank the Lord that we're living in, in, in times today to where we appreciate our Bible, at least this church does. Some people are always searching for another Bible and searching for this or that, but I love our Bible and I love what we do. And I think if everybody understands it a little better, we'll all love it more because it's very informative and it will change your life if you learn how that the scriptures are consistent all the way down through the Bible. One of the Jewish rabbis made a comment one time, and he said, you know what? God finished everything and told the story in Genesis chapter 1, and he ends it with Genesis chapter 1, beginning with chapter 2, that <clears throat> he finished all of his work in six days and rested on the Sabbath. 
So the idea is that God wrote the Bible. Now he's fulfilling every part of it. We're coming to the book of Revelations now, then he's going to fulfill that also, just like he did. Whenever they fulfill the Passover, which was like for 1,400 years since Moses had written the book of Leviticus, they practiced the Passover every year. And it came true. Everything God has written in the scriptures, it's all coming true. They said the other day, they made some new laws. They said, if you believe in prophecy, if you believe in prophecy, raise your hands. They said, if you believe in prophecy, you are now a terrorist. Aren't you glad you're a terrorist? (laughs) I mean, we believe in our Bible, and I'm sorry that some people are going along that aren't saved and they believe that. But I praise God for our Bible. I know it's real all the way down through the scriptures. Now, I want to take you into some things that I would probably uh, I always studied the book of Jude a little bit, but now we've studied it a whole lot. I'd like to share this with you. And uh, also the book of Numbers and the book of uh, Exodus that goes with this book. You can find out that so many other things that go with it And I'm going to show you today how it's so important. And I'm going to tell you how we're fighting a battle today to keep our church because men have moved into the churches. And they have come into the churches in disguise. A few years back, there was a lady came back there. Michelle shook her hand and started to give her a hug. She said, no, I don't do that. But you could tell by her voice she was a little bit like, you know, her actions were a little bit, She wasn't so feminine. I'll say it that way. And I don't know what she was looking for, but it sure wasn't us. (laughs) So we know that some people have an idea that they get into, uh, you know, the Bible, the churches, just to see what they're doing. I don't know if they're really looking for a church, if they were looking for something to base charges on us, to try to charge you for that and get 500 people out in front of your church. I have no idea. But anyway, those things do happen. If you notice something, look at Jude chapter 1, verse 4. I want you to notice why that I say this. Everything that God has written in this scripture is coming to pass today. Look what he said in verse 4. There are certain men crept in unawares. Did we pray over the scriptures? Point your finger this way and let's pray. Father, we thank you right now to open up these scriptures. Lord, we ask you in Jesus' name to print them. Burn them in our spirit. Burn them in our mind. Burn them in our heart. In Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. Jude, verse 4. They are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to the condemnation, being ungodly men. They turned the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord, God, and our Lord Jesus Christ. A lot of churches today are denying the fact that Jesus is the Messiah. They deny the Bible. They don't believe in the Genesis account. They don't believe in Genesis 3 that said Adam sinned and sin nature was passed upon man. They don't believe that. They believe the opposite. When you see the men that was crept in unawares, in other words, these are people that come in disguised and they're doing it today. These things are actually doing today. He says that they were doing it in his days too to try to find something probably to go to the Jewish temple about and try to get some accusations against them. I thought it was amazing that they are doing this. Now, if you go with me a little bit, I want to get past verses 6 and 7, because we dealt with them a little bit. Let's go right into verse number 8. Notice what the Scripture says in verse number 8. Likewise, also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, they despise and speak evil of dignities. Now, these scriptures hadn't meant a whole lot to uh, lots of people because they never really connected them with the Bible very much. But let me give you a little idea of what they mean. Go with me to Numbers chapter 16, and I'm going to show you exactly what he's talking about. He goes into this book. He tells you everything in this book that is so I don't know the word to use. It's so amazing. In verse number 7, he says, These things are written for our examples. 
That's exactly what they mean. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, these things are written for our example then. You go in the book of Hebrews, it says that these things are, again, written for our example. In other words, we're supposed to look back at the Old Testament, and we're supposed to base what we expect coming in the future as far as judgment is concerned. Now, when the judgment seat comes forth, let me give you a little insight. We know that the Christians that are born again, we're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We're going to be rewarded for everything we've done. This is why we're laboring today to put so much into our radio ministry, to put so much into our television ministry, into our prayer meetings, to promote spiritual growth, to help your love nature to be nourished and to come to uh, maturity. You know, to see the fruits of God grow in your life, to where you become immovable, unshakable, to where you be so strong. This is what our ministry is about. We're not out here to keep mom and pop happy and to keep them in church. We love them if they want to go to church, fine. We'll certainly preach the word to them. But we're not going to bend our Bible, and we're not going to change the scriptures to try to keep a big crowd. Amen? That's just not who we are. So if you notice something, these things are written as an example to us. You find out that the future judgment you can base upon the past, because God, according to Hebrews 13 and 8, he's a God that never changes. Now, if you notice something, I'm going to take you into Numbers chapter 16. Based upon that verse number 8 that I just showed you, it's a very interesting <clears throat> verse. And we're going to talk about how these people, what happened to these people that despised dominion, that despised government, and spoke evil of dominion. What is dominion? You know, in a hierarchy in a church, you have to have a leader you have to have somebody. If you didn't, you would have chaos. Any churches that don't have somebody, you've got so many doctrines. You've got so many different beliefs today. And I can tell you some of them, they've got so many different beliefs in their churches, it's actually ridiculous. But you know, God expects us to have one belief based upon our Bible. And that we're not to deviate from that. And if you learn 2 Timothy especially, you'll find out that wholesome words causes health to be in the members you'll find out that sound doctrine will cause you to be strong. Anytime you deviate from sound doctrine and you get off into denominational beliefs, well, I believe this. I don't want to hear anything like that. Show me scriptures. Let us base our life upon the scriptures because that's where we're at today. Sound doctrine, it all comes 2 Timothy. He says even in 2 Timothy 4 that in the last days men shall not endure sound doctrine. This is why we're having such problems now in the church world. Because pe preachers have an itching ears, people have an itching ears to hear preachers that are not preaching the Bible, but they're preaching sections of the Bible, scriptures out of chapters, and turning it into something that is just horrible in comparison to our Bible. And they're doing it today to run big crowds, to gain big money, and to gain attention, and that they themselves might claim to be some high one. <clears throat> one of the problems with this scripture, I'm going to read you and I'm going to show you what it says. And I preached this Friday night when we had a great service. In the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, I think it is verses 4 to 6. You can write this down if you want to, but it says that, I'll read it to you, I think it's a good idea. Let me tell you why I read you this, because you'll find out from this, there are no big people in Christianity that are proud and pride and things along this line. In the fifth chapter of 1 Peter, look what it says in verse 5. Younger, submit yourself to the elders. All of you be subject one to another. Be clothed with humility. We love to be humble to our brother. We even wash our brother's feet. We love our brother. He is our blood brother. That's who we are. We love one another. That's the commandments. And it says, for God, for this reason, God resists the proud and he gives grace to the humble. Without the grace of God, you cannot be saved. The proud and people with pride, you cannot save them no matter what you do. They may come, become skilled speakers. 
They may gain, gain great crowds and say some things, but they're not ever going to come down on sin. Not in a sense that it will keep you out of heaven. Look what it says in verse 5 and 6. It said, God resists the proud. He gives grace to a humble. He said, humble therefore yourself under the mighty hand of God that he might exalt you in due time. I repeat, there are no great people in God. I don't believe that we have a, uh, how many million dollar airplane was it? <laughs> how many? $350 million jet airplane that cost you $10,000 to go fill the tank up, to, you know, run up the street and back, or to go preach your message to those people there when there's so many preachers. You know, I don't think that that's really where we're at today. I don't believe that you have a jet airplane to fly down the road and have a whole revival and come back in a jet airplane because, you know, that's just not really where it's at. I mean, if you think about it, it's kind of absurd. I don't think that these guys that run 40,000 people in the congregation are preaching very much of the Bible. I think they love to be in high places. I think they love to be seen. I think they love to preach things that everybody hears, and they themselves love to be lifted up. You notice they never preach about hell. They never cast out a demon in their life. They don't know what it is to pull anybody out of a wheelchair, yet they claim to have so much power. You ever think about that? I mean, they never heal any sick. Oh, we believe in corporate healing. You're just going to be healed because you're here. Yeah, right. Anyway, the ideal is that we know that there is no great people serving God. That's basically what the scriptures teach. You know what? That's these great politicians that claim to be Christians on one platform. Go to another platform and claim to be a Muslim. Go to another one over here and claim to believe in ecumenicalism. In other words, all the churches come together. Oh, yes, we need to have chris -lam. We need to let... You know, you got to show your love and let Islamic people come in and worship too. Don't try to keep them out. Anyway, we'll drop that issue. Go to me to number 16. I'm going to show you now why that I'm preaching what I'm preaching. God has a hierarchy. God has ordained people. He told Jeremiah, I formed you in your mother's womb. You look at Paul. He said he had formed Paul basically about the same thing in his mother's womb. He said, you're going to be a person that suffers many things for the kingdom of God. And this is...